It's another gorgeous afternoon here in the desert. This afternoon, it's Dusty Baker's Cincinnati Reds taking on Ron Washington, Texas Rangers from Goodyear Ballpark. And welcome along, everyone. Along with Tom Grieve, I'm Steve Busby. Glad to have you in on this beautiful sunny day at Goodyear, Arizona, as the Rangers and the Reds get set to match things up in a good battle this, this afternoon. A couple of young right-handers in Matt Lados and you Darvish on the hill for the Rangers. Yeah, it's definitely a regular season matchup, Buzz. Of course, you Darvish had an all-star season for the Rangers last year. He won 16 games. Faced a lot of pressure in spring training last year. That's died down a little bit. The entourage is not quite as big. He's pitched exceptionally well in spring training. A little bit of a setback with an injury, minor injury to his neck. He missed a start, but he's back on the mound now in rotation to be ready for the second game of the season. Expect big, big things from you this year. Yeah, back to work for you and uh, the Rangers will try and back him up here this afternoon to get back over that 500 mark for the Cactus League. So it'll be the Rangers and the Reds coming up from Goodyear Ballpark right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Friday night at 7 on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by the Medical Center Arlington. Proud to serve as the official hospital of the Texas Rangers. By Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. By Captain Morgan. To life, love, and loot. Raise a glass always in moderation. And by Ozarka brand, 100% natural spring water. The official bottled water of the Texas Rangers. Gorgeous day at Goodyear Ballpark. Down in the south part of the uh, Valley of the Sun, southwest part. Shared uh, complex here, shared by the Cincinnati Reds and the Cleveland Indians. Opened up three years ago and uh, great facility. Kind of like surprise was a few years ago where it's uh, out in the middle of nowhere right now, but everything's spreading toward it. And you get a look at the uh, National League Central Division champs 
from the Cincinnati Reds from last year. The Chalupa batting order this afternoon for the Rangers. Elvis Andrews leads off. He is the shortstop. Larry Garcia bats second. DHing today, hitting third, Mitch Moreland. Nelson Cruz in the cleanup spot plays right field. Jeff Baker will bat fifth and play third base. The center fielder, Leonis Martin. Batting seventh, playing first, Jim Adusi. Giovanni Soto will catch, and batting ninth, the left fielder, Julio Bourbon. The pitching for Cincinnati today is Matt Latos. Latos last year was 14 and 4. Check out the Dairy Queen stats, spring training stats for Latos. 14 and 4, 348 ERA. Career, he's a 341 ERA. Big, strong, young. Power pitcher, good fastball, good stuff. 25-year-old Matt Latos is on the hill this afternoon. A 14-game winner last year for Cincinnati. Take a look at the defense for the Reds. Ledwick in left, Chew in center. Jay Bruce is in right. Joey Votto at first base. Brandon Phillips and Zach Kozart up the middle. And Todd Frazier is the third baseman. Miguel Olivo, the ageless one behind the plate. And Matt Latos is on the hill. Elvis Andrews to start things off. Elvis, one of the hottest hitters in spring training this year. Has that 12-game uh, hitting streak going as Latos up over the top. Fires a strike knee-high to Elvis. So the members on Elvis at 395, a home run and seven driven in. It's just off the outside corner. Latos came over from San Diego prior to the 2012 season. Big trade uh, in the offseason that year. Came over for Yonder Alonzo, Brad Boxberger, and Miss Monty Grandal. Yeah, that was a big trade for Cincinnati. Both Alonzo and Grandal were number one draft choices. Great offensive players. They also got Ed Edison Volquez mm -hmm. in that trade, too. Got to go right into the rotation. So they paid a steep price looking at Latos like he is a number one starter. And he performed very well last year. Andrews fouls it out of play to the right. And Elvis now with a count of two balls and two strikes. Latos is one of those very rare guys who was signed as a high school pitcher. He came out of Florida and only had 184 innings in the minor leagues. The most innings he ever pitched in one season in the minor leagues was 72. And he's in the big leagues in his very early 20s. And pitching successfully, too, with San Diego. Very seldom do you see a high school pitcher get to the big leagues with only 184 innings. The other thing about him was he was not one of those guys who was a number one draft choice. He was an 11th round draft choice. Mm -hmm. Not an afterthought, but not a real high draft choice. Probably have to look deeply to find a guy picked in the 11th round or later who got to the big leagues out of high school with 184 innings and then enjoyed success in his first three or four years like Lato says. It doesn't happen very often. Count is full now as Lados runs the count to three and two. Elvis trying to get aboard to start things and Larry Garcia, the switch hitting second baseman today, is waiting in the on-deck circle. Here's Garcia. Matos with the payoff pitch. Well to right field. Ball carrying well. Bruce on the run. Can't get it. It's one hopping off the wall. Steaming into second base with a leadoff double is Elvis Andrews. And his sizzling spring continues. Well, it seems like the other day, Buzz, when we were doing a ball game, we were talking about how sizzling he was. And he was hitting about 350. With that hit, he's over 400 now. So he's <laughs> sizzling even better right now. He gets a fastball up and out over the plate. Drives it right over the right fielder's head, Jay Bruce. Well, Andrews now a 13-game hitting streak, and he has hit right at 500 in that streak. That's, uh, that'll raise the average pretty quickly. So Elvis is second. Here's Larry Garcia, switch hitter up there from the left side. No bunt shown. He's going to hit one up the middle. That will get Andrews to third. Shortstop Cozart on to first, and Garcia retired, but Elvis now just 90 feet away with one out for Mitch Moreland. Good job by Garcia. Well, Ranger offense has picked up over the last couple of weeks. A lot of guys with solid batting averages. Teams starting to score a lot of runs. Nice to see. Not many guys in the lineup hitting below 320, 330. Most of them are over 3.30. No, 
Now, Mitch Moreland steps in, also a very hot Ranger hitter at 426. Mitch, the uh, team leader with those three home runs, 11 driven in. Opportunity here with Elvis at third and just one out to do some more damage. Snap throw to first or third base, and Olivo couldn't uh, nail Elvis. Miguel Olivo, well, he has been around. I gotta find out how old he is. I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. <laughs> gotta be 40. Of late with Seattle. I would, yeah, I would think so. Lattos from the stretch. And the pitch off the mark by just a bit. It's two balls and no strikes to Mitch. For Moreland, and if you remember back to last year, Mitch looks like he's in great shape. Lost about uh, 15 to 18 pounds. He said he feels much lighter or much better and with the lighter weight. Duo pit. And that catch at the inside corner. It is two and one. Out of the 14 game winner last year. He was also a 14 game winner with uh, San Diego back in 2010, in 14 and 10 in his first full big league season. Wave and a miss at the off speed pitch. It's two and two. Lattice has that straight over the top, way above average fastball, and then that off speed pitch from the same angle, change up to go along with it. It's a pretty devastating combination. Now with a two-strike count, shortstop Cozart coming in, going to play at the edge of the grass on the left side. The right side of the infield will remain back. So, Dusty Baker throwing a little defensive uh, switcheroo here with the left-handed hitting Moreland at the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got it swinging. Well, he got that pitch in on Mitch's hands, and a big strikeout for Lattos. Two gone, and Nelson Cruz now coming up. You can see why Lattos is a, it can be an overpowering pitcher, the, the power stuff that he has. See his fastball, see his changeup. That looked like a hard slider down and in. Pretty tough combination of pitches. I'm sure he's a little tough to pick up, too, the way he comes straight over the top like that. A yeah, big guy like that, the... Uh, a lot of elbows and kneecaps coming at you. Lantos at 6'6", six, six, about two, uh, 245. Well, there's plenty of pitcher out there for you to try to work with. First pitch on the outside corner about knee high, and Nelly down in the count. 0-1, Cruz hitting at 333. A couple of home runs, nine driven in. He has been swinging it well since he came back from the World Baseball Classic, part of the victorious Dominican Republic team. Up and in, and Latos evens the count at one and one. Elvis Andrus began the inning by doubling to right center field. He is now at third and two outs, and Cruz fouls it off to the right. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> I'm interested to see when you Darvish is going to feature here this afternoon. You uh, missing his last start. That was uh, scheduled for last Monday. Had that stiff neck and apparently no ill effects so far from it. A wave and a miss. And Lantos gets a couple of strikeouts to end the Ranger threat in the first. No runs a hit, one left. Half an inning in the books. Rangers nothing. Reds coming up on Fox Sports Southwest.
Rangers can't do anything but lead off double in the first inning. Lantos gets a couple of strikeouts, and here's the Cholula Reds batting order today. And Shinsu Chu will start things off. He's in center field. Brandon Phillips bats second. Joey Votto is the first baseman hitting third. Ryan Ludwig cleans things up. He plays left field. The right fielder, Jay Bruce, hits fifth. Dodd Frazier is at third base. The shortstop is Zach Kozark. That's seventh. Miguel Olivo hitting eighth and catching. And Matt Latos, the pitcher, batting ninth. And the Dairy Queen stats on U Darvish. Yeah, U Darvish minus one start with great numbers. Eight and two thirds, only a couple of walks and ten strikeouts. Pitching very well. Says he feels very comfortable this spring. Last year, we talked about it a lot, all the pressure, all the Japanese media following everything he did. Not quite that way this year. He's much more comfortable. He's been in the big leagues for a year. He's made an all-star team. He finished strong. No reason why he shouldn't get off to a great start and have a big year, maybe even a better year than he had last year. And facing Shinsu Chu. Most recently, of the Cleveland Indians coming over to the Reds in the offseason. 1-0 pitch. Got him on the fist, and that pitch fouled back. I think Chu is a great addition for Cincinnati. You look at the uh, Ranger defense very quickly. Borbone, Martin, and Cruz in the outfield. Aducey, Garcia, Andrews, and Baker around the infield. Giovanni Soto catching Yu Darvish. There's nothing on the field that Chu can't do well. He's a center fielder with a strong arm. Good base runner who can steal a base. He's got some power. He should hit 30 doubles, hit 15 or 20 home runs as a leadoff guy. Still stolen 20 bases every year. He might steal more than that as a leadoff hitter. Yeah, people might say, well, wait a minute. He was a right fielder with the Cleveland Indians. But don't forget, now the Indians had Grady Sizemore when he was healthy in, in center field. Chopper to first base, a Ducey behind the bag. will take it to first himself. And he outraces Chu for out number one. And then the Indians also had Michael Brantley when... Uh, Sizemore went down, and so they were pretty well set in center field, and Chu battled some injuries himself with the try. Well, he is retired on a bouncer to first. One away for Brandon Phillips. Phillips, the Cincinnati All-Star up there, 280 for the spring. There's three RBI. A lot of the veteran players that you see, not a lot of at-bats. According to the number that the games have played, a lot of them just kind of took it easy working into the lineup. This was such a long spring training. Rangers, of course, had uh, Lance Berkman and Adrian Beltre kind of follow the same path, not rushing into action, but once they get it going, they'll tune it up pretty quickly. Phillips swings, lofts one into shallow center field. Leonis Martin battling that high sky in the bright sunshine. Puts it away for out number two. Martin uh, enjoying a little laugh with uh, Julio Borbono. Over there. So, nah, I know you had it all the way. I just needed to get a wind sprint in to come over here just in case to help you out a little bit. Go to Wayne and Joey Votto will come up. Auto, the emerging star in the uh, National League. He's not catching anybody in that league by surprise, but uh, Auto last year battling all kinds of injuries. Still hit 337 in 111 ball games. Run production to his down, though, only 14 home runs and 56 RBI. No walls and a strike the count. As Darvish is back to it. Big slow hook. Thank you very much. It's 0-2. <laughs> Votto looking around like, wait a minute. The, fan, the fans don't notice a fastball slider. It's very tough from the stands to notice that. But the fans go ooh and ah <laughs> when he tosses that slow curveball because they can see that. A little harder variety of the breaking ball. That's a bit low. It's 1-2. and two. 26-year-old Yu Darvish, Osaka, Japan, the native on the hill. Certainly don't detect any problems with that uh, the neck or uh, lingering stiffness in that neck at all. One-two pitch. That ball is hammered to right field. That hanging slow up, and that's going to leave the ballpark. 
One nothing Cincinnati. That's a good lesson for you, Darvish, right there, too. You can toss that slow curveball up there and catch almost every hitter by surprise, but you don't catch really good hitters by surprise twice in the same at bat, yeah. especially when you get it up and hang it a little bit. That's what happens to it. That's a good lesson for the season. You start to face the good left-hand hitters around the league. Don't throw that pitch twice. Of course, that's a little bit different than the first pitch. That pitch was belt high. Yeah. One before it was down. So location plays a big part in it, too. That went so far you couldn't even see it hit the ground. <laughs> and the first pitch to Ryan Ludwig has popped up. Elvis Andrews, the shortstop, backpedaling, shallow center field. Elvis puts it away and the side retired, but... Joey Votto gets a hanging hook, and he hit it a country mile. Reds on top after one inning of play in Goodyear. 1-0 Cincinnati on Fox Sports Southwest. Joey Votto and the Reds take a one to nothing lead over you, Darvish, and the Rangers. And, folks, tickets for groups of 20 or more start at only $11 and offer savings of up to 50%. Group pricing is available in seven different seating areas for the all-new, all-inclusive center field railing. Learn more about group savings offered at every Rangers game at TexasRangers.com slash groups. Sun-drenched crowd at uh, Goodyear Ballpark today. A lot of Ranger fans in attendance. A lot of Ranger gear in, <laughs> in attendance. Jeff Baker starting things off. Lotto's first pitch is chopped slowly to third. Frazier triggers the throw across, and Baker has gone on one pitch. And that'll bring up Leonis Martin. That is for the young players, this is a good challenge facing frontline guy like Matt Latos. Won't see him during the regular season, but as you're getting ready for the season, pretty good test of where you are as a hitter when you get a chance to face him. It looks like he's throwing really well today, too. Rangers might see him, might they? Don't they play in, in Cincinnati? Do they? I think. I haven't even looked that far ahead. Yeah, I th they, that sticks in my mind for some reason. Of course, a lot of things stick in my mind, but it doesn't mean too much. Well, at least you had him there at one point in time. <laughs> I, haven't had a, I haven't had him there at any point in time. There Last the weekend, week, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, April, late in June. Take that back. He might pitch against the Rangers. I don't think any, any of the Rangers would be too terribly upset uh, if he didn't. That's for sure. One and one, the count to Martin. And it's a ball and two strikes. Well, Lados, the four-pitch pitcher, and he has pretty good command of all of them. The big fellow winds, and the pitch is called strike three. 
fastball turned Leonis into a statue at home plate. There are two gone, and Jim Adusi coming up. Got a good assortment of pitches. It looks like the way he comes straight over the top, that it's tough to pick up his fastball and doesn't change a thing in his delivery when he throws a changeup or a breaking ball. Pretty good challenge for a hitter. No three strikeouts now for Latos, and he misses to Adusi. It's ball one. Well, when you pick a high school pitcher in the 11th round and he gets to the big leagues in 184 innings with this kind of stuff and this kind of success, you've hit the jackpot. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a case that the Padres wanted to trade him, but they needed to add to their team, and they got a couple of first-round position players who are ready to go right to the big leagues, a catcher and a first baseman, as well as a fairly top-of-the-rotation starter in Edison Volquez, depending on how he's thrown, and another pros pitching prospect to go along with it. So they got a lot of quality in return for him, and it probably made sense for them to make that trade. Strike to the outside corner. It's 3-1 and one now to Adusi. Yeah, the kind of rebuilding process the Padres are going through, they had to get three or four for one for everybody they traded. Big breaking ball and a swing and a miss. The count is full. I've seen a hard slider that he throws. That looks more like a straight over the top downward breaking curveball. They off pitch on the way. That is low ball four and a deucey. Breaks a streak of five consecutive retired by Lattos, that two out walk, and it'll bring up Giovanni Soto. That's the first, first walk issued uh, by Dusty Baker's big right hander here this afternoon. We're looking at Lattos' numbers. He just doesn't walk a whole lot of folks compared to uh, the strikeout ratio. He's in the full years, the three full years that he's had as a starter, he has struck out no fewer than 185. And he's done that twice in 189 the other year. And he has walked an average of uh, 60. That's better than a 3-1. to one. There goes the Ducey. The pitch is outside. The throw is late. That's a big time and jump. A deuce, yes, he did. He had a big jump. And Lados, a big guy. And typically big guys like that are easier to run on because their motion doesn't allow them to unload the ball quickly. Ducey is doing a lot of things to impress the Rangers staff. He's running well. Every time we've seen him, he's played well. He's swinging the bat really well. Hitting over 400. I think he's a better player now than he has been at any time in his career. Of course, we haven't seen him throughout his whole career, but just looking at his minor league numbers, I don't think there's ever been a time in his career where he was playing any better than he is right now. And Tom, when you and I were talking to him before the ball game today, he mentioned that you know, he's just really thrilled to have the opportunity that he's having. He said, hey, you know, you're taking advantage of it. He said, yeah, that too. But he said, you know, to get an opportunity like this to really have a legitimate shot at making a ball club, so that if that doesn't bring out the best in you, you're probably in the wrong business. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a good point. And, you know, whether he makes the team or not, as we've said, it, it, he's, he's piqued the interest of everybody to where if when there's a need for a player, if he gets sent to the minor leagues, they won't hesitate. Those are a little off the mark with the throw, but Votto able to handle it, and the Rangers are retired. No runs for Walker left stranded after the stolen base. An inning and a half in the books. Reds one, Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest.
Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Dairy Queen. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. By Las Vegas, for all things Vegas, there's only one LasVegas.com. By Cholula, the flavorful hot sauce with the iconic wooden cap. By Capital One Bank, the official bank of the Texas Rangers. And by the City of Surprise, Surprise Recreation Campus, the spring training home of your Texas Rangers. And we will be in surprise tomorrow. These same two teams hooking it up. Back-to-back -back meetings between the Rangers and the Reds. And tomorrow afternoon, we'll have it for you on TXA 21. It'll be Alexio Gondo and Bronson Arroyo as the principals in that contest. Another 3 o'clock Central Time start. Here's Cincinnati leading one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Jay Bruce, the right fielder, to start things off, to be followed by Todd Frazier and Zach Kozart. One ball, no strikes. Cincinnati's coming off a great season last year. They were 97 and 65 in 2012. A lot of people think they've got a better team this year than they did last year. Addition of a guy like Chu. Dusty Baker, one of the. There's a spring training at <laughs> I like that. That's what the experience of uh, Dusty Baker brings for you. Get that uh, protection for the back of your neck from the sun. Baker's seen a few of them. This is his 19th year as a big league manager. Two and one the count as Darvish comes back to the plate. And that evens things to Jay Bruce. <laughs> Saw the numbers for Bruce. Four home runs, eight driven in, despite hitting just 237 for the spring. Got him swinging. Good fastball. Good sinking action on it. That's the first strikeout for you, Darvish. Well, the thing has some late sink to it, didn't it, Tom? It did. He was behind, got behind the count two and oh, then threw three quality knee-high strikes in a row. Get the punch out. No so one-away base is empty. Todd Frazier, the third baseman, will step in. Frazier, a 275 hitter for the spring. He has three home runs, nine driven in. If you're a fan of Little League Baseball and you follow the Little League World Series, you might remember Todd Frazier. He played for the 1998 World Series champs from Toms River, New Jersey. Went four for four in the championship game against the Japanese team. The ball's hit hard, but pulled foul down the left side. Trying to go to Rutgers, played baseball there. Reading his bio in the press guide, he also one time in high school basketball had 27 rebounds in a game. <laughs> so he's a great athlete, getting a chance to play quite a bit now. He was on Baseball America's all rookie team last year as their third baseman. Pretty impressive. 273 average last year with 19 home runs. One and one the count. One and two. Hugh Darvish, a 16-game winner himself last year. A lot of accolades, and deservedly so for the big right-hander. That's about as protective a swing as you're going to see. Probably feeling pretty good about following that yeah. pitch off, as nasty a slider as that was down in the way. <laughs> pretty much right where you wanted to throw that ball. Frazier couldn't do much with it, but at least he spoiled it and stayed alive. Ball strike three. Tough time, though. That ball just, that slider just looks like it moves too much and too quickly. Yep. Nothing subtle about the way this goes right to left. Well, I like that downward plane that it has on it, too. It really, that's what freezes the hitter as much as anything. The guy goes to swing and he says, nope, I can't do it. Nope. 
too late. I fouled one of them off, but <laughs> I don't think I've got it in me to get that one. Now here's Zach Kozart. Ball one to him. Kozart, the shortstop, having a good spring at 3.06. Yeah, a chance to play every day last year. 560 at bats for Cincinnati. Two balls, no strikes. At 560 at bats and hit 15 home runs. And drove in 35 runs. <laughs> he must not have hit with many men on base. <laughs> Pitch and that breaking ball is in there. He's throwing it for strikes, too. Yes, he is. Looked like he threw Bruce a couple of cutters, 2 and 0 and 2 and 1 for low, low quality strikes. There's a 2 and 2 and 0 hard slider right there. You know, people say that that's one of the important things that you need to learn as a starting pitcher at the major league level. The ability is that ball is chopped out. The ability to throw something other than a fastball for a strike when you're behind in the count. And you, Darvish, can do that with two different pitches. Can do that with a slider. He can also do that with the split finger or changeup, whichever you want to call it. So he's to say to say he's ahead of the game is an, an understatement. Yeah, he, he just did it right there. The two yep. and zero pitch was a slider. The two one pitch was a changeup or a splitter. Not sure which one. Now the two two slowly hit third base way. Cut off over there by Baker. Throw across right on the money. And that'll do it. So you Darvish and the Rangers have a one, two, three inning, a couple of punch outs. We're going to the third. Reds one, Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Hit for each ball club, but uh, the Reds had their hit leave the ballpark. Joey Votto hit the long home run. And so Cincinnati leading one to nothing as we head to the top of the third inning. It'll be Julio Bourbon to start things off, followed by the top of the order, Elvis Andrews and Larry Garcia. The red, red Rangers in blue Rangers gear floating around. We remarked, I know, last year, seeing all that every stop. That the ball club made last year. Every city that the club went to, you'd see more and more Ranger gear in evidence at the parks and around town. It's great to see. That Texas D standing out prominently down here. Julio Bobon having a great spring himself stands in. Very prominent uh, production for. The veteran outfielder, 356, the average. No home runs. Nine driven in. Latos to the wine, and the pitch is buttered at and fouled off by Bobon. Here are the numbers for Julio at 412 on base percentage. And something that uh, Bourbon had not necessarily forgotten about, but just kind of put on the back burner that bunt as a big part of his offense. 
Tried that on the first pitch and now swinging away grounds out to the second baseman Phillips one away. Here Brandon Phillips handles that opportunity back to the top of the order now for Elvis Andrews. Elvis the owner of the only a Ranger hit today that an opposite field double to lead off the game. On Washington saw Andrews get the third with one out but then Lados went to work and struck out both Moreland and Cruz to end the Ranger first inning threat. Off speed pitch four strike one. Both sides of the plate boy Lotto is really working it. 0 and 2 to count. Picks up and off the breaking ball and that was able to stay alive. Rangers offensively we remarked that uh, boy, the club got off to a terrible start swinging the bats but lately they have come around they're hitting 332 in the last week of play. I've seen their team average rise to 282 for the campaign. Breaking ball and boy he got locked up. My goodness. Okay, well, this is sorting it First pitcher with a slider in the outside corner. Fastball on the inside corner. He fouled off a slider. And then he threw him an overhand curveball that caught the inside part of the plate. Pretty good assortment right there. It's the hot hitter. The strikeout number four for Lotto's. Two gone, bases empty. Here's Larry Garcia. He's after the pitch and lines one to left. That's where Ryan Ludwig is positioned. Line drive out. That'll do it for the Rangers. They go down one, two, three for the first time here this afternoon. We finished two and a half. Cincinnati won Texas nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. And we're has it been working with the Ranger hitters after watching them over the years from the opposing dugout? Is it are they everything you thought they would be or do they have more holes? What's your impression? No, it's been everything I expected and more. Uh, the guys are very respectful of uh, new ideas. They're always open to hearing new things and that's always what you hope for. You don't you, you don't want to come in and change too many things, but obviously over the offseason looking at a lot of video, you look at some stuff and you you hope that guys are open to new things and, and they have been. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. Dave, do you approach each hitter a little bit differently as far as imparting your ideas? And how long would it take you before you got co uh, comfortable enough with the players to offer that kind of advice? Yeah, well, I tried to use the first couple weeks of spring training. I had the luxury of having a really long spring training this year. So, I, I you know, it was, it was nice to be able to have a lot of time early on to spend with the guys and watch them. And But I think you have to take everybody individually. Uh, everybody's got their, got their strengths, what makes them a good hitter. And I think that's the job of a major league hitting coach is, is identifying those things and, and keeping them within those uh, confines and... and helping them to repeat that over and over again. These, by the way, are Papa John's sounds of the game. We're talking to the Rangers hitting coach, Dave Megan. Dave, does it help you to have uh, some veteran hitters that have come along, like Lance Berkman and uh, A.J. Brzezinski, who really look like they have a pretty good feel for hitting and kind of extra coaches for you? Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, those guys can be very helpful, especially if they, they kind of fall along the same lines of your philosophy and, you know, they can help... Uh, kind of spread the word of what you're trying to do and, and uh, Lance has certainly been a bit a big ambassador for that he's he's taken his time with some some of the younger hitters and and he's he's been very helpful so that that's nice uh, nice to have Dave without knowing exactly what you're talking to the hitters about in the several games that we've done 
it appears that the hitters are making a conscious effort to drive the ball back through the middle, hit to the opposite field. Is that something that we're just observing, or is that something that you work with them on? Well, that's something we talked a lot about early in the spring, that first inning notwithstanding, you know, leaving the guy at third with less than two outs, it's something we've been very good at this spring. And we, we took a lot of time early in the spring talking about the, the approach in those situations and knowing that was uh, one of the shortfalls of the team last year offensively, and, and we've, made, we've made a conscious effort to be, get better at it, and that's kind of the approach you have to have is using the middle of the field, using the big part of the field, and and uh, didn't work out in the first inning, but, you know, I think we've done a really good job of it this spring so far. Dave, hey, with the, the mix of the veterans and, and very young players uh, that you deal with in spring training, uh, is there any basic that applies to, say, all of them or all types of hitters that you're able to identify very quickly? Well, the, the one thing you look for in a young hitter is, is he getting ready on time? Is he is he in a good position to hit and put a good swing on the ball when the ball's in the hitting area? And, and if he's doing that, then, you know, from that point, you look at the mechanics and, you know, the path of the swing and stuff like that. So... But I think it's important to uh, to realize that everybody's different. Everybody gets ready differently. Uh, everybody has a, has a different setup. Not everybody can hit the same way. And if if I can, like I said earlier, identify what what makes that guy a good hitter and help him to repeat that over and over again, then we then we've got a pretty good big leader. We've got a pretty much a, a veteran lineup, but there's also a lot of good young players kind of on the verge of being big league players, old Profar Garcia players like that. How impressed have you been with the young players who may or may not make the team but will certainly be a big part of the future? Well, it speaks a lot to our scouting department, our, our development people in the minor leagues, that these guys have come into big league camp and have made an impression on me and the other coaches. Uh, you know, some of those guys like Profar and Oak were in the big leagues last year and didn't, didn't get a whole lot of playing time but made a good impression. And, you know, they came in spring training with, with a really good routine as hitters. And, you know, whether they make the team or not, that, you know, that remains to be seen. But, you know, I like their work ethic, and, and that's really a, a big part of the battle up here is making sure these guys have a good routine and, and set themselves up for success at the big league level. Yeah, Dave, uh, we've had conversations with, uh, oh, say, Mike Maddox, the uh, Ranger pitching coach in the past, and his emphasis on simplifying things and trying to get guys, once they get between the white lines, to make the game simple and get the most out of their ability. Is that kind of approach useful for uh, big league hitters, too, to simplify things? No doubt about it. I mean, that's really what I'm all about. Uh, you know, just like a pitcher repeating his delivery, usually those guys that do that are the guys that put the ball where they want to put it. Uh, the guys, the, the hitters that can go up there and repeat their swing and do it at bat after bat, swing after swing, are the guys that have the mo most success. And when, you, when you're when you able to do that, it's usually because you have a pretty simple approach and, and your your movements are simple and repeatable. And, and that's what we're looking for. Usually when you've got a lot of variations in your setup and your your load and, and your path and you have, you know, when you've created a lot of variables in your in your uh, in your at bats, then it, it it makes it tougher to, to consistently hit the ball hard. Dave, we sure appreciate you taking the time, and we look forward to having uh, ongoing conversations with you as the season unfolds, and and hopefully a lot of runs to talk about. Yeah, with you yeah. having me on when we got one hit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. It's going to improve. Yeah. It'll, it'll get better. Thanks very much. Dave's a pretty Baggett. good pitcher too, Dave. Yes, thank you. All right, Dave Maggot and the Ranger uh, hitting coach, and some interesting things going on with Ranger hitters and you know it's an adjustment for the hitting coach coming in it's also an adjustment for the hitters working with the uh, the new hitting coach they kind of feel each other out how long a process would that normally take Tom is that a, is a full spring training to get used to it you know Buzz I'll be honest in my whole big league career never had a hitting coach really no we never really had a hitting coach on our team now Ted Williams was was a hitting coach um but I think when a, when, a, when a hitting coach, a pitching coach, has the philosophy that Dave has and the way he explained it, that he doesn't come in and try to change you right away. I mm -hmm. think that's the that would that would hit me wrong, even if I needed to change. If the first thing he started talking about were the changes yeah. I had to make, it, yeah. you know, it'd be kind of a blow to your confidence. But it sounds like Dave has a subtle approach. He's got 
strong ideas that eventually he gets across to the players. And I think when he approaches it that way, it's much more comfortable for the player. But using the big part of the field, hitting the ball back through the middle, concentrating with a man on third base in less than two outs, making contact, using the whole field, all those things are fairly fundamental fundamental ideas that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. Well, that fastball is pretty fundamental for you, Darvish. He gets the punch out. It's a 1-2-3 inning, and Darvish now has retired seven straight. We're going to the fourth inning. Reds 1, Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. when you purchase your tickets on TexasRangers.com, you'll save 50% in select seating areas for most Tuesday home games. The first Tuesday home game is April the 9th against the Tampa Bay Rays, and it's also Capital One Bank Darvish T-shirt night. Get your tickets today at TexasRangers.com slash specials. Now we head to the top of the fourth inning. And for the Rangers, who have been held at just the leadoff double in the first inning through three frames, Mitch Moreland will start things off, Nelson Cruz, and then the uh, replacement, Drew Robinson, who came in for Jeff Baker. Jeff Baker apparently had uh, some sinus issues crop up, so uh, he had to be replaced by the young Drew Robinson. But we'll tell you about that in just a second. I'll tell you about the four of that. First, here's Mitch and Moreland, a strikeout victim back in the first inning. One ball, no strikes. Moreland, the uh, biggest out so far for Matt Latos. Moreland up there with Elvis Andrews at third with one out of the first inning. Which was uh, treated rather rudely by the big right-hander, Latos. Took something off that and had Mitch out in front. One ball, one strike. Good change up. Great location with it. Does a pretty quick worker to the plate, and they're off speed delivery. And Warland now down the count, one and two. Mitch, a five game hitting streak coming in two today. So it's safely nine of his last ten games for the spring. Two and two. Oh, Mitch. Those ten games, Warland, a 536 hitter. Latos with the 2-2. That's it well to left field. Going back is Ludwig. He is at the track. At the wall. Goodbye. <laughs> Mitch Marlin going the other way with his fourth home run of the spring. And it's a 1-1 ball game. Well, he got Mitch on a couple of change-ups down. A little bit below the knees. And it looked like that pitch after a fastball was a change-up that he got up a little bit. A little bit like you, Darvish, when he got the second curveball up to Joey Votto. This one was a little bit up higher in the hitting zone. He's trying to throw it down in a way. It stays belt high. 
And Mitch showing the nice swing he's had this spring, the power that he's got to all fields. Gets it up and into the bullpen and ties the ball game. And Nelly Cruz takes a breaking ball wide for ball one. Well, there you go, John, right on cue. Up the middle, the other way. Mitch Moreland showing you exactly what Dave Magadine was talking about. Yeah, and I think especially you have that approach with two strikes. Sometimes in the big leagues today, there's really, as a hitter, talking about the average hitter, there's not the same feeling about striking out that there was 30 or 40 years ago. It used to be a much more negative thing to strike out. Now you see a lot of guys swinging at the 0-2 pitch the same as they would swing at a 3-1 pitch without regards to whether they strike out or not. Yeah, you've got a team that takes pride in not striking out, right. putting the ball in play with two strikes. You're going to get more base runners. Uh, especially if you see guys that feel like they're pretty good home run hitters. That, you know, just marginal. There's a base hit to center field for Nelly Cruz. Yeah, a guy hits 20 home runs, and all of a sudden he's swinging from his heels at every pitch he sees. Yeah. And the, the thing is, when you've got guys like Nelly Cruz and Mitch Moreland and Adrian Beltre, and you go down the lineup, these guys, even with a two-strike approach, where maybe you shorten up your swing a little bit, you're just trying to put the ball and play, almost play pepper back through the middle. If you get a good pitch to hit and hit it well, you can still hit it 400 yeah. feet. That's how strong they are. Doesn't mean you're turned it. You've turned yourself into a little punch and Judy slap hitter with the strength they have. Making contact, good contact, is not going to take away from their ability to drive the ball at all. Well, here's Drew Robinson, who took over defensively for Jeff Baker last half inning. And Robinson getting the opportunity to play. In this ball game, as we mentioned, that uh, Jeff Baker had his uh, sinus problem flare up on him. That's a common occurrence down here in the desert this time of year. But Drew Robinson, the Las Vegas native. We saw him up in Las Vegas over the week, and he shoots one of center field up base hit. Well, that's a pretty good looking stroke from Drew Robinson. <laughs> so he hit that belt high fastball a little bit harder back through the middle than it came in at him. And what a thrill for young Drew Robinson getting in the game a little sooner than he would have expected against the pitcher he probably didn't expect to face today. And ripping a base hit off one of the better pitchers in the National League. That's something to call home about tonight. Well, Robinson aboard. A pretty big smile on the youngster's face, and rightfully so. I don't blame him. Well, three consecutive hits. Morland's, of course, left the ballpark to start the inning and get a pair of singles to center field by Cruz and Robinson. Two aboard, nobody out, and Leonis Martin will come up, and we'll see if Ron Washington has his fleet-footed center fielder up there to sacrifice. Reds playing the corners in. They are expecting the sacrifice attempt. No butt here, and the hard-hit ball to first could be two. The return is in time. The nicely started by Votto, and that double play puts a big crimp in the Ranger offensive style in this inning. On to third goes Cruz. He's now there with two outs for Jim Adusi. Yeah, nice play by Votto. Votto looked like a shortstop making that play. The way he fielded it, wasted no time throwing the sidearm throw accurately to second base. Getting it right back to him for a nice 3-6-3 three, three double play. Watch how quickly he gets rid of this ball and confidently with that sidearm throw to second base. Pretty nice. So two gone. And Reducey takes low for ball one. Reducey drew a walk. His only time for the plate this afternoon. That back in the second inning. Cruz at third, two outs. Lotto is still working from the stretch. Check swing, it's a strike anyway. Lotto's working to Jim Aduce. Aduce is. Hits in seven of his last eight times, or eight games, I should play, say. Austin, five for ten. He's going to be five for 11 now in winners in scoring position. As Vado takes the ball to first base and the side retire. But the Rangers come up with a run to tie it on three hits and leave one. Three and a half has gone by. 1-1, one, one, Rangers and the Reds on Fox Sports Southwest.
A 1-1 ball game. Welcome back to Goodyear Ballpark. And a special announcement for you. There's a, a new Kia Universe seating section for in Ranger Ballpark this year. When New Darvish pitches, Rangers announced today it's a, creating a special seating section for New Darvish starts at uh, Rangers Ballpark in Arlington for this year. So however many 14, 15, 16 home games that uh, New Darvish will start, the Kia U Universe will be in effect. And uh, lovely Denise is uh, showing you what the T-shirt looks like. That's the Kia Universe T-shirt. And along with K-cards that you can hold up, signifying a uh, U Darvish strikeout. That's cool. There's, the, there's that K-card. Well, we need to, need to uh, throw that up when you get a strikeout. He's gotten three. Now, you can put these up in the U universe, the Kia universe, out there at the Rangers Ballpark. On the railing, like, uh, it's kind of like uh, King Felix and, and all those guys. They have their own sections. Yeah, and Very nice. We got the, got the Ks going. Well, this is for you, Darvish. Rangers coming up with that. And you can purchase tickets in the designated sections once the announcement is made as to when Darvish is going to pitch in that home stand. You can uh, acquire those tickets by visiting TexasRangers.com or you can call 972 Rangers anytime and they'll let you know when the universe date is announced. So that's the Kia Universe for 2013. Oh, I'm missed by it. And we can hold that, that U card up now, the K card. Strikeout number four, back to back punch outs. That's some kind of slider he's featured today. It's, un it's unhittable. When you see that slider for strike three, you put your K card up. There you go. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Watch this slider. That's just about perfect. I know we saw that a lot better than Brandon Phillips did. Yep. It kind of disappeared off the radar screen for Brandon Phillips. One gone here is Joey Votto. He has the only hit. All the Reds off of Hugh Darvish, and that was a long home run to right center field back in the first inning. One ball, no strikes. Lotto now three home runs, 10 RBI for the spring. Getting up near the 400 mark for the Reds. One and one. Darvish working from that customary stretch that uh, we have seen him utilize ever since you know, April, mid-April last year. He used, when we first saw you, Darvish, down here in spring training last year, he began throwing in his first couple of outings from the windup. Just couldn't get himself synced in, so he went to the stretch full-time during spring training. Once the season started, as he fires a strike, he went back to the windup for the first few, and then in the game against Detroit, third inning in late April, he said, nope, that's not working. And he pitched in the stretch the rest of the year after then. I would say it was successful for him. I would say it was <laughs> definitely successful, especially the last eight starts. <laughs> we don't have a radar gun today, but that's 95. And you can tell yep. the way Joey Ronald swung at that ball. That's, that's one of the best hitters in baseball coming off a long home run. And just completely overmatched by that fastball. So that's the same guy that hit the ball about 480 feet his first time up. Yeah, he just was not ready for that. Well, Denise is uh, telling you, yep, that was a, a UK again. Denise might want to come to Texas and <laughs> be part of the universe. <laughs> but three straight strikeouts. Chu, Phillips, and Bottle, first three hitters in the lineup. Five for the game, no walks for Darvish. Now facing Ryan Ludwig. Ludwig popped out to short back in the first inning. The only blemish for Darlish, Darwin, Darvish today was the hanging curveball to Joey Votto. That accounted for the only run for Cincinnati. He's been the only base runner. Yeah, and as you mentioned at the time, Tom, and I think it was a very good point. Probably a good learning, a good lesson for you, Darvish, about that. Yeah. About when to throw that and if you're going to throw it to twice in the same guy, what, to, what you have to do with it. You gotta make it unhittable. 
burying in the dirt if you're going to throw it twice. Right. And, you know, there, there are a lot of hitters. I was probably one of them who you could throw that two or three times and then that fool them every time. But there's other guys who, once you fool them once, you better not go to the well again. Unless, as you say, you throw it right down in the dirt where even if they're not full, there's nothing they could do with them anyway. One ball, no strikes to count to Ryan Ludwig. That ball trying to come in the front door and uh, didn't quite get there. It's two balls, no strikes. And the backup slider that time didn't quite have the bite on it. The 2-0. Three balls, no strikes. Mike DeMiro, by the way, is the home plate umpire today. There is Mike. Tony Randazzo, Anthony Johnson, and Patrick Mahoney are joining him. I would give you the uh, umpires on the bases and in their positions, but they change every inning. We've seen in spring training. 3-0 pitch. And that catches the inside corner. Ludwig, a big year last year for Cincinnati. 27 home runs. Ahead in the count now, three and one. And he pops it up. Right side, Adusi shading his eyes. Soto over there, too. And the ball just over the railing and out of the reach of both Soto and Adusi. Then we'll come back and try it at three and two. Part of the difficulty guys have on pop-ups down here in Arizona is that stadiums are not very tall. They're only single deck, sometimes double deck, but a small double deck. So that pop-ups that normally aren't affected by the wind as much uh, with the higher stadiums, three and four tiers, are, are affected much more down here in Arizona. And, of course, you have the traditional high sky also, but... Uh, See, with the lower seating angles, the uh, wind affects pop-ups much more. Breaking ball, bang, by the diving Drew Robinson in the left field of base hit. Well, not hit hard, but found the right spot for Ryan Ludwig. And that snaps a streak of nine straight sent down by Hugh Darvish. Two-out single puts Ludwig aboard for Jay Bruce. The slider stayed up inner part of the plate, allowed Ludwig to hit a ball pretty well to left field. Ludwig had a year in 08 for the Cardinals where he hit a point under 337 home runs and 113 RBI, so he's been a productive hitter. Got kind of a late start in his career as a productive hitter. Went to a number of teams. The A's was with the Rangers for a while. Mm -hmm. Cleveland found a home in St. Louis, and now he's had a good year last year with Cincinnati. Ludwig at first, and a big swing and a miss by Jay Bruce in the first pitch. And as Bruce down on the count, 0 and 1 to Darvish. One ball, one strike. Jay Bruce punched out by Darvish his first time up. Rangers a run on four hits. The Reds a run on two hits today. The left center field not hit all that well. Borbone and Martin over there. Julio Borbone makes the call on the catch, and that'll do it. The out single by Lund with no damage. The Reds strand their first runner of the afternoon. Fifth inning coming up from Goodyear. It's the Rangers won the...
one one ball game and the two right handers uh, hooking up today Matt Latos and you Darvish putting up uh, quite a few zeros there's a line on you here this afternoon brought to you by Captain Morgan How about that five punch outs and no walks in this afternoon the long blemish in that run call coming on that long home run in the first inning by Joey Votto other than that you Darvish certainly is game ready to me well, he's had about as good a slider as he can throw today he's also had a really good two seam fastball with movement on it don't have a radar gun but it appears he's in mid-season form which would make it 94 5 miles an hour that one to Joey Votto might have been 96 miles an hour Giovanni Soto starting things off for the Rangers here in the fifth inning First ball swing is popped up. Foul territory down the right field line. Long run for Jay Bruce. Passes over the foul line, makes the grab, and on one pitch, Soto fouls out. Well, Giovanni 0 for 2, having grounded out his first time up, and now Julio Borbone will step to the plate. And the Rangers 13-13-2 uh, this spring. One over 500 is the high water mark thus far. They've managed to get to that point four different times of late. But, uh, never to two games over 500. Oh. Corbone takes strike one. Corbone a ground ball to second base back in the third inning. A ball and a strike. Hard hit ground ball just foul just outside the bag going down that first baseline you know, Julio didn't miss by much but come back and try it again in a ball and two strikes that was a long look in to Miguel Olivo, the right-hander is ready. Ground ball, base hit to right field. So Borbone continuing his outstanding spring. He is one for two now, a one-out single, and I would imagine he's going to put the track shoes on. I would think so. He, he's, he's taking good swings. He's not fooled. Waited on that curveball, stayed up a little bit for him, but still, he had to wait on it. Did a nice job of making solid contact. Just missed a double down the right field line right before that. First time up, hit the ball fairly well to second base. So, having a good game so far against a really good pitcher and a good spring against anybody he's faced. Now, Elvis Andrews at the plate. Elvis won for two today. A first inning double as he started things off with that two bagger. Well, Bone staying put. And the breaking ball is a little bit wide for ball one. Now, Ron Washington in a situation here where he's got great speed at first and great speed at the plate, too. And Elvis, of course, handles that back very well. He, the number two man in the typical Rangers order. A very good hit and run man of Ron Watson wants to use that. Julio Borbone perfectly capable of just an outright steal on his own. And all the skies went to center field. That ball hit pretty well. Jew is going back. He is looking up and goodbye. Off the batter's eye above the yellow line. And Elvis Andrews drives one out of here. To straight away center the Rangers lead three to one. Well, you know, you talk about Elvis. We've talked about Elvis. So has everybody else. How every year he gets a little bit stronger. And upper body wise, he's a lot stronger this year. The ball carries well in Arizona, but right now when he hit that ball dead center field, 420 feet, there's not one bit of wind. The flags are dead still. And so that was Elvis driving that ball to dead center field, telling Nelly Cruz, "You're not the only guy. You're not the only guy that can take one out of center field." And remember, the first time up, he drove a, a line drive over Jay Bruce's head in right field too. So a very impressive day for Elvis against Matt, Matt Latos. That was great. It looked like Nelly Cruz was saying, "Who hit that ball for yeah. you?" Huh? Uh, check the flag, big guy, because the wind didn't blow that thing out. 
<laughs> Larry Garcia now fouling the next pitch off and one ball and one strike. Well, Elvis Andrews with his second spring home run. And he was a pretty good monster out there. Dead center field. Well, probably halfway up on that 40 foot high batter's, bo batter's eye out there in the center. Goodness. There's that uh, hitter's backdrop standing well above that yellow line that uh, demarks in the park and out of the park. Garcia takes inside, and the count is two and two down. So the Rangers, who really couldn't do anything with Lados the first three innings, have uh, made some noise here in the last two. Garcia chops one foul. He stays alive. Mitch Moreland led off the Ranger fourth inning with an opposite field home run. And now Elvis Andrews, a two-run shot to dead center field. Julio Bourbon on board ahead of that blast. Again, the 2-2 pitch. Henry Garcia is fighting that off the other way. Those are the kind of balls when you hear, see him hit toward the opposite dugout, you're glad they used the fence in front of the dugout. Now, that's <laughs> relatively new over the last maybe 10 years. They never used to have that barrier in front of the fence, in front of the dugout. Not those flags down a hot one hopper and uh, throws out Garcia. Two away. And Mitch Moreland coming up. It's a little bit di more difficult to see the game from the dugout bench, but a whole lot safer. The way the players watch the game now, many of them standing up, leaning up against that, is a way that you never could have watched the game before. Before, everybody would have been sitting down in the dugout with a pretty good view of the game, but pretty vulnerable to those kind of line shots that come into the dugout. Mitch takes a low strike. It is 0-1. More than a strikeout in the first. An opposite field home run is he let off the fourth with his fourth round tripper of the spring. Big breaking ball, and that just missed. One and one now. And two and one. And the Rangers now three runs on six hits. Five of those six hits, and all three runs have come in the last inning and two thirds against Latos. That's very high, and the count moves to three balls and a strike. Look out here, the way Mitch is swinging. With that green light, you just go to hammer it. Well, he had a cut. Foul tipped into Olivo's glove, and the count now is full. And Warren trying to extend this inning. I'm going to look at that last pitch from Latos. Day off delivery. Good oh, rip right there. Come, bitch. Win it. Come on. Oh, he is right on that. Mm hmm. And again, the 3 2 instead of a time called by Mike DeMuro. Lanos back to the plate. Got him swinging. Breaking ball, Moreland, a strikeout victory for the second time today. But in the fifth inning, the Rangers come up with two runs on Elvis Andrews' two run home run. We're going to the bottom half of inning number five. Rangers three, Reds one on Fox Sports Southwest.
Well, folks, we invite you to subscribe to MLB.TV Premium today and watch over 150 select spring training games live. Plus, uh, every regular season game is available live, out of market, or on demand in over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit TexasRangers.com for details. Bottom half of inning number five, Rangers on top now as Hugh Darvish pitches with a lead for the first time today. 3-1 Texas, and Todd Frazier will start things off. Hugh Darvish has been very, very good since giving up that home run to Joey Votto in the first inning. Just one base hit allowed over the next three innings, and he goes to work on Frazier, who was called out on strikes his first time up. Out of play for strike one. Darvish making his fourth spring training appearance, his fourth start. Only loss suffered uh, his last start, and that was against the San Francisco Giants. He pitched five very, very good innings, but was beaten in by uh, a very good Giants team. 0-2 now the count. Frazier getting out of that slightly open stance. Fastball, that's hit well to left field. The ball is going back, and that ball's gone. An 0-2 pitch. He stayed up and out over the plate, and Todd Frazier, with his fourth spring training home run, makes it a 3-2 for Ranger Lee. Uh, both home runs have come on hanging breaking balls. Darvish has thrown a lot of breaking balls today, and it's been a terrific pitch for him. He hasn't gotten away with a couple of them, though. The one that Votto hit and that ball that Frazier hit looked like a hanging curveball. Might have been a slider. He's trying to bury it down and away, but it, no, maybe it was a fastball. Whatever it was, it was up inner part of the plate. Well, the Ranger lead now is down to one. As the Reds have touched Hugh Darvish for a couple of round trippers. Jack, or Zach Cozart takes inside, and it's one ball, one strike. And speaking of home runs today, we are now joined by the Ranger first baseman slash DH, Mitch Moreland. Mitch uh, had his fourth spring training home run of the afternoon. Papa John's sound of the game. And Mitch, that, uh, you know, we were talking with... Um, Dave Magadan about using the entire field, going up the middle, hitting the ball the other way. Tom was asking him about it. Right on cue, you take one the other way and hit it out of the ballpark. Nice going. <laughs> Appreciate it. I don't know if that was, uh, that might have just been coincidence, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I had two strikes on me just trying to trying to keep keep something in play, you know. <clears throat> Mitch, we're talking a, a lot about the way we're swinging the bats and also Matt Latos and how he's throwing the ball. You've hit a home run off him, but he, he's got some pretty good stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. He got me twice today. So, uh, no, he's he's definitely on top of his game. You know, looks pretty sharp. Uh, just made a couple mistakes, but, uh, you know, that's going to happen. But overall, I think he's uh, he's looking pretty good. You know, everything looks, you know, looks like he's he's about ready to go so speaking about ready to go you have to feel like you're about ready to go too and you're when you're this hot are you kind of hoping the season's right around the corner <laughs> um yeah the spring training's a little long this year but uh you know uh, i think everybody's about ready to get started kind of fine-tuning some things this last week and uh you know i'm i'm uh i'm looking forward to it and uh ready to get going too and those are to fly ball to right that is out number one to bring up miguel Oliva. You know, Mitch, you mentioned to me about uh, losing the weight over the over the off season and coming into camp. How big of a difference has that made to you in your preparation this spring? Uh, it's definitely helped so far, but uh, you know, I kind of did it more for maybe a mid season to late season, just just to see if it would help me kind of uh, you know keep my legs up under me when uh, when it, the season gets to that grinding stage of it. You know, uh, right now, um, you know, it's helped a little, but. Uh, Hopefully that'll build uh, build throughout the season goes and I can I can feel a little better all the way through So that's that was the main goal of doing it <clears throat> Mitch Moreland joining us on our Papa John sound of the game the sounds of the game here this afternoon Well, it, it certainly looks like you're you're moving around extremely well in spring training and uh, No after effects from any of the problems you've had the last uh, last couple of years. Yeah, I mean I feel good so far and uh, you know everything feels uh, I guess you could say healthy, but um, you know it's, it's a long year, and uh, 
just trying to take it easy right now and get ready for the season. And uh, so far, that's what I've done. We've still got another week to go, but uh, I'm, I feel like I'm ready to go right now. You know, Mitch, as a young left-handed hitter, you, you grow up and you go to college and you play in the minor leagues and you face lefties, you face righties, and probably get to the point where you don't know the difference. And then in the big leagues, there's some times where you haven't played against left-handed pitching. But right now, you look like you're swinging the bat really well against them. Does it mean a lot to you knowing that you're going to get a chance to play against all kinds of pitching this year? It does, and, uh, you know, that's, that's part of it. Once you get in there and you know you're going to be in there day in, day out, and... Uh, you know, you don't really look at what if they're left-handed or right-handed, or you know who you're facing. You know you're gonna, you know you're gonna get to play. So uh, that's the goal right now is just to, to go out and uh, you know put together some quality at bats and try to compete and, and grind them out against whoever I'm facing. So uh, you know I'm looking forward to it, and you know hopefully I can continue to build on the you know the my bats having quality at bats versus lefties and, and competing that way. So. You know, Mitch, the ball club in general, uh, last year coming into spring training, the, the talk was, okay, 2011 is gone. We've forgotten about it. We're going back to work. What was the general feeling after such a disappointing end of the 2012 season last year coming into camp this year? Um, I think everybody pretty much just, you know, that was last year. You know, it's, it's a different team, a new team, and we're going to go out and, and uh, compete and play our style baseball. And, uh, you know, we got... We, we had some guys that we uh, we lost this year, but uh, we, we also gained some some guys with a lot of experience. And, uh, you know, we're trying to feed off of them a little bit and get to know them. And uh, so far, it's been a blast, you know, getting to know some of the veteran players and, and uh, still having our, our, I guess you would say, core for the most part still here. And, uh, you know, I think, I think last year is, you know, kind of over with is the way everybody's looking at it. You know, we didn't finish like we wanted, but... You know, we still had a good year and, and uh, still had some stuff that, that we did well last year. So, you know, um, you just take that for the, the positive and uh, kind of move on from there. Well, Mitch, it's been fun to watch you guys, especially the last couple of weeks. Things look like they're uh, starting to get into into uh, rhythm pretty well. You all are swinging the bats well, playing good baseball, and about time for the for the season to start, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's getting close. I think everybody's counting down the days right now. I think we get out of here Wednesday. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, every day's one day closer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for spending time with us. Uh, thanks, Mitch. Yeah, thank you. Look, look forward to, talk to, to you. talking to you during the season. All too. right, appreciate it. Mitch Warland, our uh, Papa John Sounds of the Game guest in this uh, second part of the ball game. Matt Latos, the pitcher up there, checked his swing and runs the count to three balls and two strikes. He was pitching Latos pretty tough. 2-2 two -two slider right yeah. there trying to strike him out, but... Latos was able to lay off it. Now the 3 2. And he missed high. It's ball four. Well, there's good walks and bad walks, and that's a bad walk. Yep. First walk of the day, two outs, nobody on, and it's the pitcher. That is not in the plan right there. Well, Latos uh, down to first. Maybe there's something in the scattering report about Latos and his hitting ability that maybe you Darvish has that we don't. I don't know if there's anything. I, I guess some. There may not be anything such thing as a good walk, but some walks are less bad than others. Maybe I guess you would some say are, some are more acceptable than yeah. others. Yeah, you're right. And there's no way to dress that one up. That's a bad walk. Yeah. Shinsu Chu is the hitter. Chu today, 0 for 2, a ground ball and a strikeout against Darvish. One-zero pitch coming from the Ranger right-hander. Still got a little juice on that fastball. Got it up about shoulder high, right on by Chu's swing. He struck him out last time to end the third inning with a high fastball. Threw it by him. Darvish a long look in as Giovanni Soto likes the signs out now. Chu tired of waiting for him. steps out, asks for time. Now everybody's set. Chopper toward the hole. Elvis will go the short way. And that throws out on the fielder's choice. One run on the top Ranger leadoff home run. One left. On the sixth three goes. The Rangers three, the Reds two. On Fox Sports Southwest.
of time now to take a look at the Rangers injury report brought to you by Medical Center Arlington. Colby Lewis uh, on track. Uh, no setbacks, which is the important thing for the big right-hander. It's the flexor tendon surgery. It should be late May, and Colby says it might be a little bit sooner than that. You never know. Martin Perez continuing to have that uh, broken left ulna bone heal for him. Kyle McClellan. Three week, three to four weeks out of uh, baseball activities. And it's like he won't return until May. Joaquin Soria also rehabbing and uh, on track for a late May, early June return. Neftali Feliz sometime later on in the season, maybe August or early September, possible. And the folks getting some shade any way they can out there. A very bright, sunshiny day. You Darvish and company leading the Cincinnati Reds 3-2 to two as the Rangers come to bat in the top of the sixth inning. Nelson Cruz starting things off. Only one out of two, a single his last time up. That's a rip. And a miss by Cruz. Rangers three runs on six hits. Reds two runs on three hits. Cruz a fly ball to right field. That's going to carry pretty well, but it's going to stay in the ballpark as Jay Bruce out there centers himself underneath it, puts it away, and Cruz is out number one. Andrew Robinson coming up. Drew Robinson took over for Jeff Baker. Baker had a sinus issue flare up on him, and Drew Robinson promptly got a base hit. First time he faced Matt Latos. Looks like Robbie Ross warming up down in the Ranger bullpen, so it may be five innings for Darvish today. Here's the left-hander, Robbie Ross. 1-0 pitch from Latos. Rip and a miss. Drew Robinson, 20-year-old, uh, about to turn 21. He'll turn 21 next month. Fourth-round pick in the 2010 draft out of Silverado High School, Las Vegas area. A ball and two strikes. Up behind home plate. We'll leave we're taking a look at that ball uh, about halfway back in the lower seating section. And a good time was had by all. <laughs> Two for two as Drew Robinson pounds one to right center. He's turning first and put the brakes on. As Chu able to just turn around a couple of good fastballs. Two hard hit balls back through the middle. Missed the curveball down, but came back with a fastball inside corner. Nice quick bat. Another rope for him. Two for two against Matt Latos. For Drew Robinson. The one on, one out is Leonis Martin, who's rounded into a double play his last time up. Inside corner for strike one. Martin checking with third base coach Gary Pettis, going through a series of signs down there. Latos from the stretch. Foul outside first. Oh, and two now the count. <laughs> Arizona version of the ball boy. A little more experienced ball boys down here. I'm going to give him an A for effort on that yep. one. Latos in the 0-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Big breaking ball. And Leonis Martin gone on strike. Second time he has punched out today. Latos now with 
half a dozen strikeouts, two outs, and Jim Adusi will come to the plate. A very good curveball. Kept it down, kept it away, changed speeds, and that was the result. Well, speaking of older people getting a chance to do a younger person's activity, you haven't watched the TV show called Splash, have you? With the people, I've, the diving competition? I've, I've heard of it. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 65 <laughs> years old, is on it. Jim Adusi gets his first hit of the day. He's now one for two. And the Rangers with runners at the corners and two outs for Giovanni Soto. All right, so Kareem. And he's diving off, you know, a three or five meter diving board, huh? trying to do flips and back dives. Pretty impressive, boy. The, the one that was really impressive, though, and I'm not sure how old he is. He must be 60. And he's a big guy. Is Louis Anderson did a swan dive off a 10-meter board. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. I give him credit for get. I wouldn't do it. I give him a lot of credit for get up, getting up there and doing it. I wouldn't call that must-watch TV, but I just happened to be switching stations one night and caught it. Ended up watching the whole show. That's why I'm giving our man down the right field line an A for effort on that play. Not that easy. You get to be our age. I know what that feels like trying to reach down for a ground ball and maybe losing your balance a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Been there. Yeah. Try not to do it in front of the grandkids, though, so they look at me like, whoa. <laughs> Grandpa's looking old. There goes the Ducey and a bluff throw to second. We were just hanging on to it. He was going to see if he could get Drew Robinson straying off third, but no such luck. And Ducey with his second stolen base of the afternoon. Now runners at second and third and two outs. And a no two count on Soto. But Jim Aducey, you know, the more the more we see him, the more uh, impressive he looks at doing the things as you mentioned, Tom. He really is. A lot of different things. He doesn't look like a minor league player. He looks like a big league player all the way. Everything about him. Appeal down to first base and no swing. Now the count is one ball and two strikes. Soto trying to increase the Ranger lead. It stands at 3 2 at the moment. He's chopped foul. And we'll come back and try it again. And these two teams tomorrow afternoon, once again, Alexi Ogando getting the start. Bronson Arroyo will be on the hill for Cincinnati. That ball game at 3 o'clock Central Time from Surprise Stadium. Kelly Parker Field at Surprise Stadium. Up the middle, off Latos. Knocks it down. Oliva can't get the handle on it. Soto is safe in to score is Robinson, and the Rangers take a 4-2 to two lead. And boy, that, that got a lot of Matt Lato's foot. That yeah, hit about as square in the ankle as you could get hit by a ball. It, it was a base hit all the way up the middle if it didn't hit Latos in the foot. And so the fact that it bounced far enough away to where Soto could get a base hit probably deserved it. Should have had a base hit up the middle anyway. Latos blocked it. Olivo couldn't make the play. He picks up a an RBI with it. And Lotto's walking around. Dusty Baker very quickly out there along with the Reds trainer. Make sure that uh, Lotto's is okay. The last thing they would do is if there's any doubt that Lotto's can pitch without favoring that foot is leave me in. And Dusty's not going to do it. I think that's a, that's a real wise thing to do in spring training. Say, no, we're not taking a chance on uh, a guy as valuable as Matt Lotto. So he will be finished and We'll have a reliever coming in who will have all the time that he needs to pick up and get ready. The Latos finished, and uh, as the reliever comes in, you get another look at the shot off the right foot of Matt Latos. So it goes down as an RBI single for Giovanni Soto, and the Rangers do increase their lead now. It's 4-2 to two Texas. Well, the new reliever is coming in to take his warm-up tosses. We will take a timeout. Be right back after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Well, the Rangers leading the Reds by a four to two count. As right now will bring you the pitching change necessitated on the hot shot off Lado's foot. Nick Cristiani, a right hander in to take over. Cristiani on the spring. This will be his eighth ball game. Seven and two thirds innings. Not bad numbers. The ERA is a little high, but the numbers don't look that bad. I guess four walks and seven two thirds is a little high. Giving up a home run. Cristiani, a 25 year old, goes six feet tall, 190 pounds, out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. Reds 13th round selection in the uh, 2009 June draft. The so runners at the corners. A run across, two outs, and Julio Borbon takes a fastball to the inside corner for strike one. Borbon, one out of two today with a single and a run scored. Cristiani, a check of the runners. This is low with the breaking ball. The Lato's finished after uh, five and two thirds, nine hits, four runs so far. He had one walk and uh, six strikeouts. A couple of home runs. Bourbon looks at a strike to make it one and two. <laughs> Cristiani ready. This is with a breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes. Cristiani last year worked at Triple A. He has been a reliever his entire pro career. Last year in 54 games, he went two and five with a 3 3 4 earned run average. And the 2-2. The flare out in the shallow right field. In a hurry is Bruce. A running catch. And that will do it. But the Rangers come up with a run on three hits. They leave two. And we're going to the bottom of the sixth. Rangers four, Reds two on Fox Sports Southwest. Well, you Darvish finished for the afternoon as he heads out to the uh, clubhouse out in right field through the gate out there of the door, the uh, fence. Four to two, he leaves with the Rangers on top. And uh, Robbie Ross will come in. The Ozarka pitching change brings you the left hander, Robbie Ross. We had dinner with Robbie Ross last night. We had a nice dinner over in Scottsdale. Robbie and his wife and his mother in law were there. Channel 21 and some of their sponsors had a good time. Beautiful dinner. You enjoyed it, Buzz. I watched yeah. you eat all night long. <laughs> Took me all oh, night. You didn't have dessert. Night. I was disappointed. No, I didn't. I, did. I was being very good last night about that. A lot of changes for the Rangers. We'll get you those. 
Brandon Phillips leading things off against Robbie Ross here in the sixth inning. Lines one to center field. Two is left. Gliding over there, making the catch. Big on Martin. And that is out number one. So Phillips 0 for 3 as he lines out to start this sixth inning. And now Joey Votto will come in to face Robbie Ross. The changes for the Rangers. Erickson Profar is at shortstop now. Did you get the other changes, Tom? We've got Joey Butler is in right Butler's field. In right. And I'm not sure if there are any more after that. Ducey is still at first. Mm -hmm. I think that's Garcia at second. Drew Robinson's at third. And Joey Votto disposed of very quickly by Robbie Ross. He pitched punch out. He's out number two. Joey Votto, after he hit the home run, has seen some pretty tough pitches for strike three. Fastball from Darvish. And a fastball from Robbie Ross. Almost a similar type swing. Pounded him in with a fastball. He couldn't quite catch up with it. Might have been looking for something out over the plate. Fooled by the location. Nevertheless, two nice pitches for strikeouts of the next game. You know, Ryan Ludwig taking on the first pitch. Lines went into the left field. They're both over to cut it off. Ludwig will cruise into second base with a stand up double. And he's there with two away here in the sixth inning. Ryan Ludwig with a couple of hits today. And, double, and a single. And we'll bring up Jay Bruce. Pretty good pitch. Ran the fastball in on the fist. Jammed Ludwig with that, but a little soft line drive was down the line. Two outs, he doubles. Now Robbie Ross facing the left-handed swinging Jay Bruce. And Bruce over two today. A strikeout, a fly ball. Just missed off the inside corner. One ball and no strikes. Reds now with four hits this afternoon. Darvish only allowing three of them. Robbie coming in to give up a two-out single. Or double, I should say. That's up high. It's two balls, no strikes. Bobby Ross was announced the uh, day before yesterday back into the bullpen. And certainly not a demotion, uh, just a matter of need as far as the Rangers were concerned. Pitch a little bit low, three balls and no strikes. Mike Maddox and Ron Washington discussing things and thought it would be better if Robbie anchored a position in that bullpen that he was very familiar with and he had a lot of success with last year for the pitch on the outside corner. Three and one the count. And it looks like, Tom, that the Rangers may break camp with three left-handers in the bullpen. Primarily be, not because they necessarily need three left-handers, but because those are the guys that are throwing the best. Yeah, I think it boils down to bringing the seven or eight pitchers out of the bullpen who have the best chance of getting outs for you. Whether they are lefty or righty. A lot of decisions uh, coming down to the final six or seven games of this spring training. Call strike three. It's coming back from a three-yard count. Hey, Bruce caught admiring that Robbie Ross off. Ray Ross works around the two-out double. We're going to the seventh inning. It remains the Rangers for the Reds, two on Fox Sports Southwest.
Folks, the opening weekend continues. Actually, I should say opening week continues. That's April 8th through the 10th. Rangers will take on the Rays from Tampa Bay, and the series concludes with a 105 start on Wednesday. And you won't want to miss the first Nolan Ryan Beef Dollar Hot Dog Day of the season. We call 972 Rangers. You get your tickets today. Nolan Ryan Beef Dollar Hot Dog Day. First one of the year coming up on Wednesday, the 10th of April. Now we head to the seventh inning. Around uh, well, that's six or seven thousand on hand here this afternoon. The uh, ballpark seats about ten and a half thousand. And they have now seen the big right-hander Jonathan Broxton come on to face the Rangers. Jerickson Profar. Switch hitting shortstop up there to lead things off. He took over for Elvis Andrews in the last half inning, and he is facing Broxton. The Ozarka pitching change bringing you the stats on Jonathan Broxton. Good stats this spring for the big guy. 6'4", 309 pounds. That's what he's listed in the media guide as. That's a big guy. Pitch for Kansas City for the first part of the year and then finished the year with Cincinnati. Saved 26 or 7 games last year. Good hard fastball and saw the hard slider to pro far to jump ahead. No balls and two strikes. Longtime Dodger was the closer with the Dodgers for a long time. Had as many as 36 saves with the Dodgers back in 2009. High and outside. Hard fastball from Broxton. Hard slider. Nothing real tricky about the big guy. He's going to be fairly deceptive too, I would think, for a hitter to pick up. Yeah. Be a bad guy to charge the mound against, too, boy. <laughs> you try as hard as you want to tackle him. He's, I don't think the big guy is going down. We're going to need some help. <laughs> have to be a game tackle. <laughs> One and two to Jerickson Profar. Broxton back to the plate. Now that base hit to right field. And Profar begins the Rangers seventh by singling through the hole on the right side. He is aboard, and Larry Garcia will come to the plate. A good job by Jerickson. He was behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. Looked like Broxton ran a cut fastball in on the fist. Jerickson puts a nice swing on it, gets himself a ground ball single. So from, from up here, we were talking about this before the game. Jerickson doesn't look like a big guy. But down on the field next to him, he's a solidly built kid. Yes, he is. He looks like he's about 6'2", 185 pounds or so, maybe a little more than that. He's not a little guy. That's why when you see him hit the ball out of the ballpark, it's, it's not a shock. Yeah, and you shake hands with him, too, and he's got a fairly very strong grip. His hands are... Very strong, which uh, will play right into what you're talking about, Tom. The ability to get that bat through the hitting zone. Yeah, he's got a he's got a quick bat that generates power. It's only 20 years old. He's got a chance to fill out, be even a little bit bigger, kind of like Elvis has done throughout his career. Profar going the throw down the second. I don't know, got I don't know whether uh, Garcia missed a hit and run. It looked like the jump that Profar had that he thought it was a hit and run. And he's looking in at Garcia, too. <laughs> he didn't have a stolen base jump there. He's kind of looking out as he's going back into the dugout. I would agree with you, Buzz, that he thought it might have been a hit and run. So the leadoff single is erased by that caught stealing. One out, base is empty, and the count is two balls and no strikes to Garcia, and he fouls the next pitch off. Garcia today, 0 for 3 as you get a shot of Jerickson Profar down there on the bench. There he is, grounded out a couple of times, also uh, lined to left field. Rip and a miss, and the count evens at 2 and 2. Rangers with double digits in hits again today. They have Four runs on ten hits. We mentioned the 
club is really started swinging the bat well the last week. And well over 3.30. Got him swinging. Bronson worked over Garcia pretty well. Gets the punch out. Two gone. Mitch Mormon will not take the at bat. It'll be Craig Gentry instead. Gentry will come on and uh, swing in the designated hitter role. That's a good fastball. That ball really tailed away from Garcia. Looked like the bat was right on the ball, but the ball tailed away so far the bat couldn't reach the ball. Great movement on that fastball. And a bill high strike to Craig Gentry. 283 this spring for Gentry. The couple of home runs. 377 on base percentage. It's out of play. Back to the screen. It's 0-2. Jonathan Broxton, the third pitcher used this afternoon by Cincinnati Reds. Dusty Baker going to the bullpen one extra time because of the ground ball off the foot of what is starting now. There's a drive to left field into the corner. It is Bob Ludwig all the way to the wall. Into second base and putting the brakes on there is Greg Gentry. And boy, Gentry really turning on that hanger inside and showing you some of the pop that he's had this spring. Yep, another guy that's looked really good all spring long. Trying to come back and have another good season. Hit 290 for the Rangers last year. Did a nice job when he got a chance to play. Broxton tries to run the fastball in on Craig's fist, but he was ready for it, turned on it, hit it well past Ludwig in left field. Most of the hitters are swinging the bats pretty well right now. Mm -hmm. It's great to see as you approach opening day. A little more than a week away. Now here's Joey Butler. Big rip and a miss for Butler. Joey spent the 2012 campaign down a round rock and had a real good season. You can see the numbers there with 20 home runs hitting 290 at AAA. Chance here with Gentry at second and two outs to add on to the Ranger lead. Down on the count, no. Now 0 and 2. Gentry aboard with the two out double. That's the 11th Ranger hit of the afternoon. Broxton set the 0 2 pitch. Got him swing. Well, Broxton gets a pair of strikeouts in the inning. Rangers do not score despite having a couple of hits. He's grand a runner. Stretch time in Goodyear. It's the Rangers for the Reds, too, on Fox Sports Southwest.
Kirchhoff back to the hill, protecting a 4-2 Ranger lead here. And broken back ground ball in the hole. Profar fires it and just does. Get Todd Frazier at first base. A good look at uh, not only the broken bat, but a good look at Jerickson Profar's strong arm from the hole. When you talk to the scouts, not just the Ranger scouts, but scouts from other teams that have watched him play, and they'll all talk in glowing terms of the way he plays defense. Does have a strong arm, excellent range, ability to make all the plays, just like Elvis. Probably a lot like Elvis at the same age, defensively. Maybe a little more advanced offensively, mm -hmm. especially with power. And Robbie Ross coming to the plate, Jack Bozart taking a pitch off the plate inside for ball one. You saw on the receiving end, by the way, of that throw at first base, Mike Bianucci has come in to take over for Jim Adusi. So Bianucci, the new first baseman. We also have a new center fielder, Leonis Martin, finished for the afternoon. Robbie Ross with a 2 0 pitch. Three balls and no strikes. That ball sinks off the outer corner. Jake Skoll is the new uh, Rangers center fielder. Comes a strike three and one. Cozart, ground ball to third, a fly ball to right today. 0 for 2. And he takes strike two. That fills the count. Here's Jake Skoll. In the outfield now with Borbone in left, Skoll in center, and Butler in right field. Ross with the payoff pitch. Outside ball four. That is the second walk issued by Ranger pitching today. One by Hugh Darvish and uh, one by Robbie Ross. Look, Joey Butler out there in right field. Miguel Olivo will come to the plate now with Gozart at first and one out. Olivo, the ground ball to short and a fly ball to left field. And a rip at that high fastball from Ross. It's 0-1. Well, Olivo's got some power. He can he can take a nice swing and hit the ball out of the ballpark against it if you're not careful. I'm trying to do that with that swing, that's for sure. Ross a snap throw to first and with a headlong dive. Cozart back ahead of the tag from Bianucci. Bianucci. They got a Ducci, a Ducci replaced, replaced by Bianucci. <laughs> right out of the Godfather. It's Italian day at first base. <laughs> One strike. How about a steak? Steak. Ross okays the sign and comes set. Peanuts. This major leagues kid. The outside corner. Good pitch by Ross. Spotted that nicely, and now it's one and two. <laughs> Robbie, you remember, was uh, in the mix for the number five starting spot of the rotation, and said you know, he'd like to have a shot at it. He did, and just didn't look like he was comfortable. So he will fouls that away. Going to going to uh, his third pitch, and that would have been the changeup uh, or even the curveball. Looks like he's much more comfortable just using the the fastball, the cutter, and the one breaking ball that he throws. And with that uh, assortment of pitches, the Rangers felt that he'd be much better suited for staying in the bullpen, where he had found a comfort level last year. Got him swinging. Pitch down and in on Levo. A big strikeout for Ross. There are two gone. And the pitch hitter now as the pitcher spot is up. Good hard slider by Robbie. Kept it down and in. If he wasn't able to swing at it, once you commit to that pitch, you are a strikeout. Because you're not going to hit that. Chris Heisey. Outfielder by trade is going to be the pinch hitter. First ball swinging, pops one in the foul that will reach the suits over the Ranger dugout. So 
Isaac this spring a 3 0 4 hit. He's uh, shown some thump in the bat. Three home runs, nine driven in. Ross back to him. Big two hopper. And Garcia thought about going to second and had time as he couldn't get the handle to recover and throw to first, and that'll do it. No runs on, no hits to Walker left stranded. Seven in the books from Goodyear, Rangers four, Reds two on Fox Sports Southwest. Medical Center Arlington. Proud to serve as the official hospital of the Texas Rangers. By Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. By Captain Morgan. To life, love, and loot. Raise a glass. Always in moderation. And by Ozarka Brand. 100% natural spring water. The official bottled water of the Texas Rangers. They lead the Reds as Texas comes to bat here in the top of the eighth inning. And our Ozarka board ready once again with a pitching change play Hensley right hander coming on to work here in the eighth inning a bunch of changes for the Reds we'll give those two as we get going and Drew Robinson leading things off as Hensley deals to the outside corner for strike one Robinson two for two since taking over Earlier in the ball game, pops this one up. All territory, and that's going to drift just into the dugout. Of the Cincinnati Reds. Saw the new catcher, Corky Miller, over in pursuit of back to foul ball. There's Corky Miller. We had a whole new infield also for the Reds. We'll get to that in just a moment. Infield now, Donald Lutz at uh, first base. Cesar Estoris, the second baseman. Emmanuel Burris at short. Jack Anahan is over at third. Making ball and foul tip goes all the way to the backstop. It is no balls and two strikes. to the wind, the one-two pitch. Just inside. Robinson taking a close pitch, and that evens the count at two and two. It's been a good day for Drew Robinson. Got a chance to get into the game early. Jeff Baker had to come out after one at bat with a sinus condition. And all Drew's done is hit two line shots back through the middle against Matt Latos. Well, it's construction. Foul down, and we'll come back and try it again. I would think that's probably what you mean by making the most of an opportunity. 
I'm not sure where Drew is scheduled to play this year, whether it's high A or double A. He's a nice young prospect, one of many nice young prospects in the Ranger farm system. in the dirt. You know, the count moves to three and two now to Drew Robinson. Robinson last year spent the entire year at Hickory, which I believe that's the high class A, isn't it? I think so. 273 last year. Outside corner call strike three. And Robinson thought window shopping becomes the first out. So well, that'll bring up Jake Skoll for his first at bat. Borderline pitch. If you're a hitter, you're probably saying, nah, that ball's low and away. Yeah, Drew Robinson not, uh, not murmuring too much. As Hensley drops a big overhand curveball in there to... Jake Skoll with strike one. Skoll last year at Myrtle Beach, which is another A classification, 185 the average for him. Down on the count now, no balls and two strikes. Hensley's 0 2. The official paid attendance this afternoon 6,192 on this Saturday afternoon in Goodyear. Again, the 0 2 pitch. In the dirt, swung on and missed. Corky Miller has, hard, has a hard time coming up with the ball, and the throw then is too late. And Jake's goal aboard on the strikeout and a wild pitch. And then it went off speed pitch down and obviously out of the strike zone. Ball bounces up out in front of the plate. The catcher can't block it. The runner hustles to first. Ends up getting on. Those are hard to they're hard to force yourself to run as fast as you can on a strikeout. You just you know you've struck out, you don't feel good about missing the pitch in the dirt, but you know you have to do it, especially when you've got a chance to get on first base. So for Jake, it's a good thing he did sprint to first base because he was able to beat it out. He's there now for Mike Bianucci, who is up there for the first time this afternoon. Don't you? The runner going, fouls the next pitch off. A little hit and run action going, and uh, back to first goes Jake's Cole. Saw the numbers for Bianucci last year at AAA Round Rock. 14 home runs for the Express. One ball, one strike. Rip and a miss. Clay Hensley following Matt Latos, Nick Cristiani, and Jonathan Broxton to the hill here this afternoon. Rangers leading 4-2. to two. They have out hit the Reds 11-4. to four. Check swing fastball just off the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Hi, Very comfortable afternoon here in the desert. Temperature in the, right around 80 degrees. Expecting about the same kind of weather tomorrow. It uh, doesn't get much better than this. For the tail end of spring training. Rangers finish up with games here tomorrow through Wednesday. And the break camp go on back to the Metroplex. Which foul back. Take on the Mexico City Red Devils on Thursday. 
Had to head down to San Antonio Friday and Saturday. Yeah, the Alamo Dome take on the San Diego Padres in a pair Friday night at 7 o'clock and Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock affair in the Alamo Dome. First time baseball has been played in the 20 year old Alamo Dome. Talking about that a little bit today during during lunch about the configuration down there. Apparently it's not going to be an outlandish football palace turned into a baseball field kind of configuration. That pitch outside. Snap throw to first. Back with the dive is goal. Now you might see a couple balls hit out of there that wouldn't go out of a regular stadium, but if it's 285 and it goes out kind of at a normal angle to right field, generally in a lot of ballparks, it's maybe 330 down the line. So you might have 40 feet there. How many balls in the course of a game drop between 285 and 340 feet on yeah. there? Maybe one or two. There goes Skoll. The pitch swung on him. Miss the throw is late. Skoll swipes second. Iannucci gone on strikes, and now they're going to send Skoll back to first. As home plate umpire Mike DeMiro ruling batter interference on the throw. It's funny to go on Washington with the uh, gestures and a few words that uh, it was interference. The like strikeout of Bianucci stands and did that come around and hit the catcher, it looked like? Yep. Or he stood in front of the catcher one way or the other, it was called. One of those innings where the pitcher, Clay Hensley in this case, has a chance to get four strikeouts. Now Giovanni Soto for his fourth at bat of the afternoon had an RBI infield single his last time up. He had a rocket up the middle that glanced off the foot of the starter, Matt Latos. Went into foul territory for the RBI base hit and also drove Latos from the game. One for three today. Tossed to first and back standing is goal. Two. Nice relay play. Strong throw home. Umpire's right on top of it. Good call. Skoll definitely got his hand in ahead of the tag. Good try by everybody. Giovanni Soto with his second straight RBI hit. This one a double. He is now at second base. A run across two outs. And Julio Borbone takes a breaking ball for ball one. Soto getting RBI knocks his last two times to the plate. Julio up to three, a broken back grounder up the middle. Shortstop Burris sidearm over to first base, and that'll do it. The Rangers come up with another run on a couple of hits, and they strand one. Bottom of the eighth coming up. It's the Rangers five, the Reds two on Fox Sports Southwest.
of innings. They increased their lead down to five to two. A dozen hits for the Rangers, only four for the Reds. And as we go to the eighth inning, Ron Washington has called the bullpen one more time. And Ozarka board will be busy again, bringing you Tanner Shepherds this time. Some timely hitting for the Rangers today and some good pitching. You Darvish was sharp. A couple of runs in five innings, one walk and five strikeouts. Robbie Ross, pretty sharp. A hit and a walk in two innings, struck out three. Now it's Tanner's turn, taking a five to three lead, five to two lead into the eighth inning. And keep the ball down, get some movement on his fastball, located a little bit better within the strike zone. And Dennis Phipps starting things off, his first at bat of the afternoon. Phipps took over for Shinsu Chu in center field a couple of innings ago. And this is his first chance to swing the lumber. 1 0 pitch. A fisted foul ball backing off the screen. One ball and one strike. Those numbers on Phipps uh, 257 the average, 316. Not the kind of on base percentage you'd like to see from a guy with pretty good speed. Breaking ball is shot foul down the right side. And Shepard's out in front of the count now at one and two. Down the 26 year old. Southern California native. This one's popped up. Foul territory, first base side. Rianucci and Garcia. Garcia, nice running catch. Larry Garcia about 20 feet into foul territory. Had to make that basket catch. Stayed with it very nicely. That's out number one. It's a tough play for him because he had to run so far. It's even a tougher play for Bianucci at first base. The ball's directly over his head, going straight down the line, looking up into the sun. Better angle for Garcia. Nice speed, made a nice play. Gets the first out for Tanner. One gone here is Cesar Asturias, a ground ball in the hole and under the glove of Profar. Asturias, a big turn at first, but Bourbon gets the ball back in. I'd like to have seen Jerkson feel that ball just to see if he could have gotten a strong throw off. Asturias was going to beat it out anyway. I don't think he had any chance to throw him out. But when you've got a young player with the tools that Jerkson has, you'd like to see him get a chance to show him off. It would have been a good opportunity. But they said all the way. A one on, one out. Donald Lutz up for his first time. <laughs> Left handed hitter up there with Isduras at first. And Shepard's working from the stretch for the first time today. Now time called as Lutz tired of waiting. A home run for Lutz this spring. 14 average. And first pitch to him. There's a strike to the inside corner. Good fastball there from Tanner Shepard. Talked a lot about the makeup of the Ranger bullpen, how it's still up in the air, especially from the right side. Tanner Shepard's part of that mix that's uh, trying to sort things out here in the late going of spring training. The one and one now. Shepherds and a trio of other right-handers. They get that final couple of spots. Josh Lindblom and Cody Woods. Johan Jan still in the mix. Ron Washington and Mike Maddox waiting for uh, somebody to step forward. Two on the count as that ball down by the feet of Donald Lutz. And Eric Lowe is in the mix for something. <laughs> we don't know exactly what yet. Eric has, has started three times. He has started three times in the course of a week. And uh, Rangers just aren't sure where he's going to fit in because they don't know how quickly he can build up to be considered for a start. Yeah, that's that's the question. And chances are he's got a, a pretty good chance to make the team maybe in the Scott Feldman role where in the course of the season you get some spot starts and pitch in long relief. And no one's ruling out. Garcia, Brofar, back to first, not in time. That's able to lay out the return throw from Brofar and prevent the double play from being turned. 
Xavier Paul will step in for his first at bat. Shepard's okay is the sign. A check of Lutz at first. Rip and miss by Paul. It's 0-1. Xavier Paul with a couple of round trippers this spring. 29 home runs for the Reds coming into play here this afternoon as a team. With the two more that they've hit, they're now up to 31. Ball is rifled down the right field, but it hooks foul back into the seats. And the count moves to 0-2. Rangers in the meantime with their two home runs today now have 29 for the spring. Ball back in the batter's box, Tanner Shepherds. Bending at the waist, reading the signs, now the right-hander is ready. To left field, moving back is Bourbon, and he's on the warning track, puts the brakes on, reaches up, makes the catch, and Tanner Shepherds out of the inning with no damage. No runs to hit, one left. We're going to the night from Goodyear, Rangers 5, Reds 2 on Fox Sports Southwest. A dozen base hits for the Texans this afternoon as we go to the top of the ninth inning. A new pitcher on the hill to be the veteran left-hander Manny Parra. Coming on to uh, work to the top of the Ranger order here in the ninth inning. Less than enthusiastic waving of the big <laughs> number one. It's been a long afternoon out in the sun. Manny Parra becomes the fifth pitcher used this afternoon, and uh, the Ozarka numbers for Parra. And Parra be pitching in his eighth game this spring. Well, it's generally speaking, that's at the end of spring training. You want your relief pitchers to have eight or ten appearances, 12 or 15 innings, right around there if they're short relievers. And the first hitter that he will face, Jerickson Profar, who turns around to hit from the right side. And pitch number one is high. Ball one. Profar heated the game in the seventh inning and got aboard to start it off with a base hit to right field. A 
and he is two for two. That's a rope. He shoots that one right by Parra's right shin. Two out of two. A couple of good at bats. Pulled the ball into right field. Left handed and shoots one up the middle, right handed. The one on, nobody out. Larry Garcia will come up for his fourth at bat. I think that he's fifth at bat. Time to do anything, so he's just lucky it didn't hit him in the foot. But down the first baseline, Barra fields and gets Garcia at first in the scoring position. Go to Jerickson Profar. So Barra, uh, Garcia able to execute against Barra on the sacrifice. It goes 1 3. And it will bring up Craig Gentry. Well, if, if you want to play in the big leagues, as Right now, a utility player. Those are the little things that you'll need to show Ron Washington that you can do. Get the bunt down when you're asked to do it. Garcia still in camp. Competing. No one has indicated who the utility infielder will be yet. Gentry a shot by the third baseman, Hanahan, and down into the corner. Jogging around third, coming in to score is Profar. Going for three is Gentry. The slide, he's in safely with an RBI triple. It is six to two, Texas. Well, Craig was obviously going to be, be in easily at second base, but when it took a little while for the left fielder to get the ball, and he just kept right on going and just outran the ball to third base. Second good at bat for Gentry in the game. He doubled in the seventh inning, hit the ball hard to left field. And then he hits the ball again down the left field line, maybe a little bit harder this time than last time for a triple. So he came into the game, hit in the seventh inning. He's got a double and a triple, making the most out of his short appearance today. And Tom, you brought up a real good point the other night about the, the corners in spring training uh, being deep at uh, 345 down the lines here. The, the ball going all the way into the corner it takes a while for the outfielder to get down there and yeah. get the ball back in. You wouldn't think it would make that much difference, but that extra, in a lot of cases, 20 feet, you really notice it in spring training. It just looks like it takes forever to get the ball out of the corner. And so often in the few games we've done, you just see the extra bases taken by the hitter or the base runners. Well, the Ranger advantage now is four, and the infield comes all the way in with Gentry at third and one out. Joey Butler a rip and a miss, and he is down on the count on two. Butler in his first at bat went down swinging on three pitches. That was against Jonathan Broxton back in the seventh inning. Now, this is a good game for the Rangers, good offensive game. They've had 14 hits against guys that are going to be on the Reds team and more than that important guys on the Reds team one of their top starters Broxton Hensley set up relievers mm -hmm. Rangers had a good day offensively a lot of well hit balls a lot of good at bats they had Dave Magadan on earlier Dave has to be leaving today at the end of the day saying my hitters did a great job Joey Butler down on strikes for the second time this afternoon so Gentry will stay at third. There are now two outs. Drew Robinson will get an opportunity to uh, do some more damage. Robinson, two for three since entering the ball game back in the fourth inning. Left-hander versus left-hander. Owen won the count. Two outs, of course. The Reds infield now back at normal depth. Making balls wide. Nice block by Corky Miller to keep that ball close enough to home to prevent Nick Gentry from coming down the line. That's where all the dirty work the catchers do during spring training, blocking balls all the time in practice comes into play. Drew Robinson got one in on the fist, fought that off foul. The ball and two strikes. It's fun watching Drew Robinson and uh, Joey Gallo. 
highly prized ranger up in Las Vegas both of them from the Las Vegas area where they put on some shows and batting practice up there check swing the pitch is low it's two and two they were trying to outdo each other in the, in the process they lost about half the baseballs the Rangers showed up with the BP yeah Drew held his own but that's a tough one to keep up with yeah. right there if you're talking about batting practice home runs at least if they're going pure distance he's, right. a, he's a pretty tough guy to beat the 2-2 pitch right on the right leg that ball Coming back into Robinson, it looked like he just froze on it. Tip went off the right leg somewhere. So he'll be for it. And Jake Skull will get a shot at Manny Parra. A belt. Got by the smile that he's okay. It's another opportunity for Jake Skoll to get his second at bat of the game. Struck out in the eighth inning, but he got on base. And the pitch got by the catcher and scored a run. One ball, no strikes. That breaking ball hangs harmlessly high and inside to Jake Skoll. Back to the plate. It's outside, 2 0. Greg Gentry, the runner at third. There after an RBI triple over at first, Drew Robinson, who was hit by a pitch. A run across and two outs. Two and one, the count. Again, looking forward to tomorrow. Let's see, Ogando gets a start for the Rangers. And at some point in the ballgame, Nate Robertson, Joe Nathan, and Corey Burns are scheduled to head to the hill. We'll have that game for you at 3 o'clock Central Time on TXA 21. Bronson Arroyo will be towing the rubber for Cincinnati in that contest. It'll be our last game, uh, last television game from the Arizona portion of spring training. We of course, have the Thursday night game with the Mexico City Red Devils. And then the two with the Padres in San Antonio. Ball four is outside. That loads them up. And we'll bring up Mike Bianucci. This goal has been aboard two times. Bianucci, 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Comes up with the bases full here and two outs in the ninth inning. Rangers, of course, open up the American League season a week from tomorrow. Down in Minute Maid Park. Matt Harrison on the hill for the Rangers in the open. The strike to the outside corner. Still find it weird to say the Astros are being a division game. Yeah. Astros in the, in the American League this year, of course, in the Western Division. Division rivals now officially for the Rangers. Out of play off the bat of Bianucci, and the count is no balls and two strikes. Well, Giovanni Soto is on deck. He's one of the few catchers we've seen catch nine innings in spring training. Caught you, Darvish, a lot last year. I wonder mm -hmm. if that'll be the way that Ron Washington gets A.J. Pruszynski a rest during the season. It's probably making Soto Darvish's catcher. One and two to be a neutral. It's not a bad way to do it, really. If you're the right. regular catcher like Pruszynski, you pretty much know uh, you're off days ahead of time. And for Darvish, he works well with Soto. Soto knows him very well, so... It's not a slight AJ in any way, but mm -hmm. it might be a good way to get a regular day off every five days. And ball at the middle. Nice pickup and backhand flip by Burris. 
to get the force at second. So the Rangers gone in the ninth, but they add on a run on a couple of hits. They leave three. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Rangers six, Reds two on Fox Sports Southwest. Well, the Rangers have added on late, and they now lead 6-2 to two over the Reds. And a big part of that was our Capital One Bank play of the game in the fifth inning. Elvis Andrews up there, one on and one out. Dead center field off Matt Latos. And that gave the Rangers the 3-1 to one lead that they would never relinquish. Second spring training home run for Elvis Andrews this spring, and it was a big one. 400 and uh, well, probably 30, 40 feet to dead center field. Well, Tanner Shepard is back to the hill. He starts to work here in the bottom of the ninth inning, trying to close out this ball game for the Texas Rangers. Gave up a hit in the eighth inning, but no damage done. Nick Robinson. Slices one to left field and playing it a little bit side saddle, Julio Borbon. Oh, we're thinking out of the world. Yeah. I stayed with it, had it all the way. Robinson lines out to left field. That's how the ninth inning begins. Jack Hanahan. The newer Reds coming over. At the time with Cleveland. It seemed like Hanahan always did something when the Rangers played either Oakland or Cleveland when he was with them defensively to, to rob somebody. Yeah, it does. It does. He did make a lot of good plays. Line drive off the glove of Profar out of the center field. Well, Hanahan, I don't know whether that was a knuckleball or if Jurickson just didn't see it very well coming off the bat, but he played it like it moved a, a lot late away from it. is aboard. That ball looked like it was too hot to handle. He got his all his glove on it, just knocked the glove right off his hand practically as hard as that ball was hit. Obviously a play he needs to make, get the glove on it like that, but at the same time, that was a rope. Well, Hanahan aboard, and now Emmanuel Burris for his first at bat of the afternoon. Check swing, it's a strike. Shepard's the advantage now at 0 and 1. Dan, that familiar shoulder high set. Could be two. Underhand by Profile Garcia. Boy, getting down that line, but not in quick enough time. Burris is gotten on a 6-4-3 twin killing as 
Profar and Garcia turn it over, and that seals a Ranger victory. The final this afternoon, the Rangers six, the Reds two, as uh, a trio of Ranger pitchers led by Hugh Darvish limits the Reds to two runs on six hits. Rangers, meanwhile, six runs on 14 hits. So the Rangers go back to a game over 500. We'll be back to good year. Ballpark to wrap things up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.